What's up guys, this is English Grammar Explains and this time I continue to talk about conditionals. How to make sentences with conditionals. Real condition, unreal condition and so on. And that's the part 2. The link to part 1 is the video description. And uh, here we will talk about so-called unreal conditions. In part one, I talked about real things, and here we start to enter into unreal world, some kind of unreal world. That's unreal conditions. So, there are basically two types of unreal conditions, and uh, type, uh, so-called type 2, because we have type 1 and type 0, and, of course, we have type 2. Type 2 is unreal present. Why present? Because we also have unreal past. Unreal present. Uh, so, how is it formed? What is unreal present? And uh, how can I make sentence with this unreal present thing? Uh, so, in if clause, in if clause, I, of course, I use if. I can use its alternative, it's when. That's the beginning of my if clause. And then I have to use past simple. Yes. Here we talk about present, but we use past simple. That's very, very important to remember. Is there any alternative to past simple? Yes, it is, and it is uh, past continuous. But it's, well, it's not convenient, it's long, so mostly people use past simple. That's 90% of all the sentences with unreal present. Well, and what about the main clause? What do we have in main clause? In the main clause we have basically a bunch of uh, nodal verbs, that's would, could, might, with bare infinitive. That's very important. Bare infinitive. Not full, bare. So what is bare infinitive? That's the infinitive without two. For example, this thing might go or could sleep or so on, so on. Just like this. So if I look at my examples in the beginning here, Number three, if I found one hundred dollars, I would spend them all. If I found that simple past, and I would spend would plus bare infinitive here, and that's classical type two. That's type two condition. So, when to use this uh, type two? If we talk about something unreal in the present, some imaginary situation, so this situation is not in reality, it's just in my head. If I look at my example again, here, if I found $100, I would spend them all. So, what is here? I don't, uh, I, in fact, I really didn't find any dollars, uh, anything. I, I didn't find it, I don't find it, I'm not finding it, if you will, and that's, that's all in my head, uh, so I cannot spend anything, uh, but I imagine the situation and I talk about it. Okay, and what about number three, or third type of condition, or type three, if you will? Uh, type 3 is all about unreal past. That's unreal past. And here in main clause, of course, I have if or when. And then after this, I use past perfect. Of course, I can use past perfect continuous as an alternative if I want to, I want to talk about some process, about some uh, long action or whatever. So the alternative is past perfect continuous. But it's very tedious, it's very difficult technically, it's long, 
So mostly people use past perfect this thing. So what about the main sentence, the main clause? In the main clause, of course, I also use modal verbs. Modal verbs would, could, just like in type 2, might, and then I use so-called perfect infinitive. What is perfect infinitive? Uh, because modal verbs basically don't have any tense, I have uh, to, to show the time of action in some way. Well, for this I use combination of have plus participle to. And that's the perfect infinitive. So if you, if you hear about perfect infinitive, it spells have plus participle to. Nothing fancy. If I look at my examples again, in number four, we see if you had come in time, the boss would not have shouted at you. And that's type three. Here in if clause, I use past perfect. I talk about past. That's imaginary past. That's very important. That didn't come in reality. That didn't happen at all. But in my head, I imagine something and I uh, talk about it. Uh, so the main clause uh, consists of, as you see, a modal verb plus so-called perfect infinitive or have plus participle to. And this is also the imaginary situation that's not real. If I talk like this, I express uh, some criticism or regrets or just imagine something, I fret about something, and so on, so on. It's, um, it has some negative flavor, if you will. So that's imaginary situation in the past. Regrets, criticism, and so on. I talk about some past events, and I imagine what would have happened if something had happened, if you will. But in reality, it didn't happen at all, and well, that's, that's the reality. Well, and that's all about uh, types of conditionals. Of course, there are a lot of interesting things about it. Uh, all these conditionals can mix together except uh, type 0, it doesn't mix with anything. You can mix type 2 in type 3 and use, uh, for example, if clause from type 2 and uh, main clause from type 3. Uh, that's very, very tricky, but it's very, very useful, believe me. So, it's all for now. Thanks for watching. Feel free to subscribe, to like or dislike, to share or whatever. Thanks for watching again and see you in the next video.